Hi guys, we're back. I'm sure people that don't know about dogs are saying, a grain dog? So I want you to think of a grain dog that just has never had any exposure to that exercise is what a grain dog is. So that's why I'm starting this dog. Not because I need the dog to do that. I'm doing that one so I can show you guys. And two, it is a dog that wants attention all the time to the point it's almost a pain, not almost a pain, it's really a pain. You know, if I let Talbot out right now, it would start jumping around. Hi, Jill. Okay, yeah, this is a dog that just, kind of like Wilson does, you know, when it sees a new dog, all jumping around in their face, trying to keep them from taking one step while they're jumping and getting all in their face, not noticing that the other dog can't stand them. Uh, the difference between this dog and Wilson is this dog is like five or six years old and it still does it. You know, it's, it's eternally got that trait. So I'm just doing it as a way to show people because I want everybody to be able to do this. And I want you to work on, you know, expanding Wilson's. We, we can talk about ways to uh, expand his exercises because you don't want to just be doing the same thing. And I'm going to tell you why. Things change. Stories change, stories evolve. If you keep doing the same thing and you don't move the story along, they do. They say to themselves, what about, wonder what would happen if, you know what I mean? So what I've got, and this is just, I do have my phone. Let me get up here a little closer. And I don't really know, I don't, you know, this dog is definitely not one that's always playing with a stick or anything, but, you know, I think you should just have a variety of objects, uh, and I think socks are a good place to start. I got that Rottweiler picking up socks, uh, even though it had gotten in trouble in the past for picking up shoes and socks, because... As far as I know, there's not a dog on the planet that wouldn't pick up a sock. A dog that's walking along, there's a, suddenly a sock. You know, they're going to be interested in it, from what I can tell. So I've got my stuff. I do have my collar on, and I think, you know, I do think we want to think in terms of creating these behaviors and everything, and the pager, you know, we're not excluding the pager from that in any way, and there wouldn't be any reason to, you know. So, and remember, this dog is deaf, so I've got to do everything by, um, you know, just hand signals. And it's green to this, so I think I'm just going to try. And I do want to have my cone. I understand that. I think we want to have that from the beginning, too. Okay, that was a little too easy. <laughs> Yeah, I promise you I've never worked this dog on this. I told Mike I would do it. But you got to not get too excited yet. Your job is to take that grain and make it go right 500 more times. Again, my job at this point is not to tell it to do anything. Only my character has been written as someone who has a seeming interest. You know, because if you said, how many times does it take them to understand there's a sequence? Well, twice. <laughs> but your job is, again, I, I, I'm a clean slate right here, so I can write on this. I got my guarding behavior, though. So I'm starting to add my sequence, though. The hand started to come out, but then it went back. Yeah, Mike, this is a little too easy. There's got to be something more to this. Again, your job is not to point or tell them to go get it. You 
And I do think it's just, it's good as a way to add in that guarding behavior to let them know, yeah, here's a signal that's universal. Mine. She saw something happened. Again, the crucial part, you guys, I promise you, is going back to, it's not doing anything now. I hope you're watching, Mike. I, I promise you, I just got this dog out, and she's been a good little dog for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I've, I'm going to post that deaf dog video of her again, because she's, you know, again, a good example. I'd, I'd put her up against any of the Stimmer's recalls, you know, and I think you have to think to yourself on some level, you know, I've got the choice with this dog. to get more aggravated with it because if it's always bouncing around, barking, always wanting to be the center of attention, or I can do something else with it, I have to make those choices. And honestly, it ends up being better for me. But I've got to tell you, I, I'm going to have to get, I'm going to try to get a different one. Maybe I should do it with Molly. If Molly could do it. You know, but I think what you're trying to do right away is add this part so it sees because if you said well uh, eventually they'll program a little machine it has hands and sleeves that look real and it teaches your dog to fetch for you the fetch a matic not the deliver a hand a matic If you said, what do you notice? Oh, it's going to play with stuff with its foot forever. And if you said, how do you fix that? <laughs> but if you find out, please let me know. So, it, you know, that's, she's now seen that hand go like that about four times. She's not stupid. So she's understanding that has something to do with it. I sort of semi cooked the hot dogs. They don't tend they tend not to cook evenly. I'm actually amazed Molly's not over here trying to steal from her. And if Molly did come up the thing about this dog, and this is why I say it's a garden variety dog, it has a huge spectrum of behavior. So it it now that's the fifth time it's seen that hand signal. You know, and it's crucial for me to go back to this. She's looking. She's looking. So, and I think it's crucial for you guys. Again, I got my treats. I don't have a hoodie on today. I just got to put the treats on one side or the other. But, you know, for you to, re to be ready with that delivery where one hand's giving the treat, the other hand's taking the thing, and the right hand knows what the left hand's doing. don't want to overdo it again if you I want you guys to think of it this way I'm just moving my hand a little bit gave her a hint I'm, I'm spooked Mike if you're watching this I promise you even if I had been working with this dog night and day to get it to do this and I have it. Oh, now she's getting the water bottle. 
my job is if I can, if, I, if she can look over here and I, if she can see me doing it, I could probably get her to do it that quick. I think that quick you can get them. It, it is the DNA thing. If you can set up a sequence and you have enough of a fraction, it's what is that game, um, horse or whatever, I don't know if you know that game, I'm sure you do. Uh, you know, where you get little hints and then you have to figure out what the hangman or something. These are the kind of games we played when I was a kid. We didn't have Nintendo in these things. We had games called Hangman. They only required a pencil and a piece of paper. I think it's very, very important that you have the very... I can get her to pick it up. It's kind of far away, though. But that you resist any urge to try to tell them to do anything. Even move, even the worst thing, and this is what I see you guys at home doing, that you're pointing. Don't point. Don't point. Because again, there's no possibility of failure with this. That's what I want you to understand. There's zero possibility of failure because I didn't I didn't say anything. Sure, I was looking at something, you know, but I look at a lot of things. That's all I do is look at things. <laughs> you know, what does anybody do but look at things? So she saw that hand signal again. And my job is, again, if, if, if the Kelly Bot 5000, the robot they invent 500 years from now, it's going to have a sensor, and it's going to be in and out with the treats. Gone. There was no... I don't want you... When you guys give them the treats, you have to think of it as the head isn't moving at all. If I put the Kelly Box computer program on it, you know, that's how... So she saw the hand signal again. So you need to be sitting, and I think, you know, your goal from here, honestly, my goal from here would be, you know, if we're setting some kind of, you know, 200 times or something, and that may be too long with some dogs. You know, I, if you said this dog is way more talented, that bulldog, uh, it took me a month to get that bulldog to do this. <laughs> You know, this should have been the one I got out to do it with, because then you would have said, oh, my God. You know, but this is what I call a garden variety dog. It'll get in fights with other dogs. Oh, it's gotten fights with Luke before. Um, so it's kind of a testosterone-laden female. But then it's overly grovelly with other dogs. That old dog I had, Son. Oh, she just, Son hated her. She would get all over Son, and Son would snap and snap and snap at her. And the more... Sun snap, the more she would start play bowing. And anyway, so I don't know, you guys. That's, I really didn't think. Yeah, Jill, I don't know if you just saw that, but I, I honestly really didn't think that was going to be the outcome of doing this with this dog. I thought it would take a lot more. So, you know, and if you said, well, I think I can get her to pick that up. One, because she already picked it up, and two, she cares where I'm looking. If I can just marry those two things. You know, and your job is, as, you know, again, trying to factor them out. In, in fact, this is what my knowledge base is on Jill. Dogs, don't touch this. <laughs> oh, that's what we call opposite training. <laughs> Dogs, don't touch this. Dogs, pull me, then they heal.
I'm not going to break my stair, though. So she saw the hand signal. If you said, what do you do now? Whether it's this, you're con still control because I don't have any really ability. The only thing I can really control the dog, and I want you to think of that even if you're the stationary handler. Maybe I should call it the sitting handler because you still have the ability to move around. But I, if you said, what's the key component? Uh, what I wouldn't do is put this far away right now. Because the key component is speed. As soon as it picks it up, get it in your hand. That's how you under, you know. If you said, what would the wrong thing to do? Tug. I think if you've played tug, you may be in trouble. So anyway, Mike, I hope you're watching. I think we need to really get as technical as possible with this to make it as easy as possible for people to do this. But I'm already seeing within the third or fourth time, it recognized that as part of the sequence. So anyway, I, you know, I think you have to think of that. If, you know, if you just ask me which was the most annoying dog, I have this one. Because, you know, it's had to wear a bark collar and all these other things because she just barks and ruins the video. So, anyway, so I'm going to work on that. I can probably get her. You know, she's definitely way more talented than that. Uh, hello, Joanna. I, I, after what just happened here, I, I honestly believe any of you at home can have your dog doing this by 2.30 this afternoon. Any of you. Any of you. That we're not encouraging more people to do this is really making me realize that I wasn't doing this more, you know, because if this dog that's quite frankly a very annoying dog uh, and is deaf and is just a mutt can do it in that short of a time, your highly intelligent purebreds can do it. All right, guys, we'll be right back.